Alright, so this is chapter 10 on waves in less than 5 minutes. So we're going to start off with wave types. So um, up here we have shear waves, which are also called transverse waves. Now these waves, um, the particles in them, move perpendicular to the direction that the wave propagates. So let me explain that. This wave is traveling to the right, but if we look at the individual particles, they're moving you know, downwards, and then once we get to the bottom, they kind of start moving upwards, and then at the top they start moving downwards again. These waves can only go through solids. Now, in contrast to that, we have compression or longitudinal waves. These particles travel in the same direction that the wave propagates. So both are moving to the right here. Um, as it moves, it kind of compresses through space. They can go through solids, liquids, or gases. Um, a good example of this kind of wave is sound. As the sound is leaving my mouth, if someone else was standing next to me, those sounds would be compressed through the air and then they reach their ears. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is wave property. So we'll just move over to the right side of the board over here. And this is kind of the anatomy of a wave a little bit. So we'll start off with the amplitude. We see we have this median line here that kind of cuts across the middle of the wave. From this point to the top or from this point to the bottom, that's the amplitude. So just how high up or how low it travels. Now, if we look at the top point on the wave, that's the crest. That's the point of maximal how high it goes up. Down here is the trough, the lowest point that it reaches. If we go from crest to crest, or from trough to trough, or any identical point in the wave, that is our wavelength, all right? So there's a couple things I want to talk about. There's wave speed and, wave, um, and frequency. Wave speed is just how fast the wave travels, and frequency is how many times a crest is going to pass a certain point. So here we have a really big wavelength. These crests are spread out. And here we have a, a lot smaller wavelength. But we're going to have a lot higher frequency with this. Even though they're traveling at the exact same speed, these crests are going to pass a lot less often than these guys. You're going to get a lot more frequency on here. All right, the next thing we're going to do is wave behaviors. So there's four things down here. The first one is reflection. As a wave travels, sometimes it'll hit something like a mirror. You see this every day when you go look in the mirror. It hits the mirror and then it reflects right off, just showing for a mirror what you can see. Um, refraction is where you have a change in medium and that wave is going to bend. So we have a cup of water and a straw. And as you look into that clear cup, you can see the air up here, which is one medium, and the water down here. And as that Oops, sorry, we'll draw that back in. As you look at it, the, the wave kind of appears to bend as we're looking at it. All right, so next we have diffraction. So as a wave either turns a corner or goes through a slit, it's going to spread out. You can think of people trying to get into a concert. The doors finally open and it's just like, ugh, they finally, they finally get to spread out. Interference, if you imagine two slits next to each other, you have one wave on top of another wave. And sometimes, these little spots are going to have interference. There's two kinds. There's constructive and destructive. With constructive um, interference, imagine if you have one crest, the high point, and another crest, another high point, and it kind of builds on itself and makes an even bigger wave. Um, you could also have a trough and a trough, so low plus low, and it makes it even lower. With destructive interference, you're going to have like a crest, which is really high, and a trough, and with that, it kind of cancels itself out and makes a node. All right, so next is standing waves. So I, I mentioned nodes before. That's a point where it's going to appear that there's no wave moving. Um, so as this wave is traveling, it gets at the perfect frequency that as it hits the end here and reflects back, it travels right back on itself. So there's no wave traveling through these dotted lines. Antinodes are the parts where the wave does travel. Nodes are the part where you don't see it moving at all. Um, Doppler effect is our last thing we're going to cover. And that's kind of as an object is moving towards you. As these waves travel towards this person, they become compressed. Um, and then as it's traveling away from this guy, they become
becoming spread out. So these compressed waves have a really high frequency, and these spread out waves have a low frequency, right? And so if you are on a race, and a race car travels past you, it's going to become like, mm, it's really high, and then after it leaves the big wavelength, it's going to have a low frequency, making that lower pitch.